All right, students, episode 11 of basics of bass fishing, the very basics, okay? So one of the things I get asked a lot is, I wanna do this, I wanna go out and bass fish, I wanna touch a fish, see a fish, I wanna catch a fish, I wanna have those skills, I wanna get out in nature, I wanna hear the birds and feel the air and smell the water and all that, that's all great, but I don't know even how to go do that. So let me show you how I go do that. So we're gonna start from the ground up. By the way, I was going through my gears I, and I have this in my hand because I thought it was absolutely ridiculous because you, you know I have kind of a thing with these like giant mega lures. Um, I fished a tournament with a guy years ago that was into these giant mega lures and uh, they're just fun. Honestly, it's just, they're giant toys and, and they're just fun. But then again, so is bass fishing. It's, that's the whole point, it's just to have fun. Anyway, so I've got one of these massive, I, I think this is a, a 16 or an 18 absolutely ridiculous uh, lure but anyway so how i start fishing so uh we'll start from the ground up okay uh step one is to go to your local uh, like thrift store or uh, goodwill something like that and get yourself some fishing shoes what qualifies as fishing shoes five bucks that's what qualifies as fishing shoes completely worn out set of tennis shoes particularly if you get into wade fishing which is something that uh, when I was a kid, Daryl Hanna, uh, or Doug Hanna, Daryl Hanna, who's Daryl Hanna? Doug Hanna. I think mean, it was Hannon, Hanna, something like that. Anyway, he was this bass fishing guy uh, back in the 80s and 90s that, that did a lot of wade fishing in little small john boats and stuff like that. He was a big inspiration for me. And one of the things that, that he said was, uh, you know, worn out pair of blue jeans, worn out pair of uh, shoes, that's wade fishing on the budget. Now, Moving up uh, in terms of what do you wear like for pants. Believe it or not, around a bunch of ponds and swamps and little sloughs and creeks and stuff, the mosquitoes can be pretty rough, so can ticks. So I highly recommend you wear uh, some just basic blue jeans or maybe some Dickies pants or something that are, that are cheap because you are going to wear them out. You're going to go through some thorns and stuff. You're going to get them muddy. You're going to get them wet. Uh, you're going to get dip and dye on them and fish formula on them and stuff like that. You're going to sweat in them. These don't need to be nice clothes. Moving up from that, how do I carry all my gear? So I just use a backpack. Uh, I've had all of my gear, all of my rods, reels, and lures and stuff stolen twice. Because the, you can go straight to the pawn shop, your name's not on any of the lures or anything, you can put them on eBay, you can sell it on Facebook Marketplace, you can pawn them at the pawn shop or whatever, within minutes. If it looks like a tackle box, people might steal it. So I just use an old worn out book bag. The kind of people that steal things, uh, that do petty theft like that are not the kind of people that read books. So just use a, a book bag from school, right? Or one that you got the thrift store where you got your shoes. It's all worn out bag. It can be Paw Patrol or, or you know, whatever, something like that. Who cares? Um, this is a, bit, a bag that I've had for probably 20 years and it's gone everywhere with me. You see, it's got, still got a, a plain thing on it. I mean, I, I've gone all over the place with this and this is my fishing bag. Uh, it's just an REI uh, bag, like I said, that I've had for years and years and years. And let me show you what's in it. So I use these little Plano boxes. This one's for giant crankbaits. I got one for topwater bait. And I got one for shallow lip crankbaits uh, and shallow jerk baits. So that's kind of how I organize my gear. Now I've got all these lovely side pockets in this front pocket. Uh, I should have unzipped everything before I started the camera. I've got all my dip and dive. Uh, a lot of these pockets have got line and stuff, you know, extra line. Of course, you got your sunscreen, snacks, water, that those sorts of goodies in there. Um, GPS unit if you're doing, you know, you're kind of boondocking out in the middle of nowhere, uh, which is a fun way to fish. I've done that with a buddy of mine. Uh, fished a pond that we saw on a satellite image off in the woods we ended up catching a lot of big bass so uh that can that can be lots of fun but if you're going to do stuff like that carry a gps unit There's something kind of back up in case your phone dies or you lose reception uh, gps units you can get quite affordably even if you get the cheaper gps units that'll only get you within you know 100 feet of where you're trying to be you know 40 50 feet of where you're trying to be that will get you back to your car right and that and that's or the trail that you left or whatever and so that those are really really important now let me show you carry so we're kind of going up the the person the fisherman here 
And so a lot of people carry uh, soft plastic lures. I talk about soft plastic lures a lot. I love them. And uh, so the neat thing about soft plastics, when you buy them, they're already in their own bag. So I just throw them off in here, right? If I need new worms, or I want to change techniques. I want to go to, uh, I've, I've been fishing a, a Zoom horny toad and nothing's going on. I want to slow down and go to a Zoom trick worm. Great, I've got, I've got 10 bags of worms in my, my bag there. And if I want to go, you know, the next day, I want to do something different, hit a different pond, or if I want to switch to mega lures, I just take those bags out and put in different bags. Easy. Now, kind of going up from that, a lot of people are going to carry two rods. So I, I do this a lot. Um, usually I'll hit the water with one seven foot heavy action rod on braid, something really big that I'm throwing a Texas rig on, maybe a frog on. And then I'll have something really light, a little finesse rod if I want to throw a trick worm. So here's how I do this. You're going to be shocked at the complexity of, of how, how complicated this is. You need your book bag, you need a tiny carabiner, and you need your spare rod. So I'm going to zip this up about halfway on the left side. I'm going to go ahead and make the turn over on the right side. Shove my rod down in it. We'll zip it up like that. I don't know if you can see it. It's all the way on the what, what would be the left side of the bag. I'm in my garage here, so I can't pick it up too much. So there you see. Now, it'll just the, the bag will just keep opening up. So there's where the tiny carabiner comes in. All I've done here is clip the zippers together so that they can't come undone and my rod doesn't come out. I throw right-handed when I cast. And when I set it up this way, my spare rod is over my head on my left side. So I would have to like really be trying to hit it in order to hit it. If you can cast sideways or roll cast, then you're never going to hit that rod over above you on your left side back here. It's kind of like we're when you put window stickers on your car. Stickers make them go faster, by the way. Um, there, there's a lot of people don't know that. When you put goofy stickers all over your car, there is a, a spiritual performance increase because of the goofy stickers. But anyway, uh, learn how to side cast. That keeps you from, if you fish off the bank like I do, uh, you learn that pretty quick. Also roll casting because that keeps you out of the trees and it keeps you from hitting your spare rod that's on your back. So there you have it, folks. Oh. I forgot one thing. This is a tiny little Plano box. It's double-sided. This is where I keep all my weights on one side. I've got them marked one, three-quarter, half, and so on. And I keep all my hooks on the other side. And that goes in one of the outside pockets. Boom. So now in my bag, there's nothing about it that looks like a tackle box. It rides right on my back when I'm walking down the banks fishing. Or even if I wade fish, it's high on my back. I don't even necessarily have to. I can be in three feet of water and not get it wet. Uh, this is where all my water is going to be, snacks are going to be, sunscreen is going to be, hooks, weights, beads, swivels, backup line, soft plastics, spare rod, GPS unit, all that stuff in the bag. Then when you get some ratty old blue jeans, some ratty old shoes, last thing you need is a big old hat and you're ready to go.